What is up guys, it's Modded Warfare here and welcome back to another hardware tutorial. So in this tutorial what we're going to be doing is opening up the PS4 uh, completely. We're going to take the whole motherboard out. In order to get to the front of the motherboard you have to take the whole motherboard out completely which separates it from the heatsink so if you are going to open it all the way to taking the motherboard out to have a look at the front side of the board then you are going to need thermal compound when you put the console back together you're going to have to apply fresh thermal compound so keep that in mind. However, you can get to the disk drive and the power supply unit without having to get to the motherboard. So you won't need thermal compound if you're just trying to get, you know, maybe the Blu-ray drive out or the power supply out. Okay, so, and again, of course, the hard drive as well, which is really easy to remove. So first thing we're going to do is open it up to get the hard drive out. This is the easiest part because um, Sony luckily make it very easy for you to access the hard drive so that you can upgrade it. Um, you don't even have to void the warranty to get the hard drive off, which is great, uh, unlike the Xbox One. So, so in order to take to get the hard drive out, you just remove the glossy part of the PS4. Uh, what you want to do is just get your fingers under here and pull on both sides. And eventually, as you can see there, it comes off pretty easily. Well, it did take a bit of force. And then you've got access to the hard drive. And there's a screw right here that you can use, Phillips screwdriver, to take that screw out. And then you'll be able to pull the hard drive out. And then you can pull the hard drive out. And as you can see, it's just a standard 2.5 inch laptop drive. There's two screws at either side that you can use to take the drive completely out of this little metal casing. And from there you can swap that out with a larger hard drive or an SSD, some other 2.5 inch drive will fit in there fine. Okay, so now we get to the part where you are going to void the warranty, which is opening up the console any further, is what that's gonna do, it's gonna void the warranty. So if you flip the console upside down, right here, and what we have is a screw here, two screws here, and there's another screw back here. And in order to take those out, there's two warranty stickers here. So if you take the screws out, you're going to break the seal on the warranty. What you can do is use a hair dryer or a heat gun. If you're using a heat gun, make sure you don't melt the sticker. Um, but you can use a heat gun or a hair dryer to heat up the sticker so you can peel it off without damaging it. And then when you put the console back together, you can put the stickers back on. Um, if you don't care about the warranty or the warranty is expired, just uh, unscrew the, the screws. Just stick the screwdriver in and mess up the sticker if you don't mind. There's also going to be a blank sticker on this one, possibly on this one as well, that you need to um, peel, peel off to get access to the screw. But once you've done that, take out those screws, so two in the middle and one at each side for that. So now, once you've done that, it'll be very easy. It'll just start to come apart. You can just pull this back part off. Really simple. And here you've got access to the power supply unit, which is right here. There's the um, fan for the heatsink, uh, for the GPU and CPU, and then you've got your Blu-ray drive right here. So again, there's a few a few screws, they kind of mix and match between Phillips screws and security torques, which is kind of annoying because nobody likes security torques. Um, but if you don't have a security torque screwdriver, I think I've already broken the security bits off these screws. So I might not, well, actually I might be able to show you on this one as an example here by zooming on this screw. Basically, guys, what I recommend is not letting security torques prevent you from opening up the system. Security torques are actually not too hard to deal with even if you don't have a security torque screwdriver. So for example, right here, I've got a little flathead screwdriver and it's just the right size that I can put it in between the security bit on the security torques, in between that and the side of the screw itself and then I can start taking it out if you can see that guys, I'm using a flathead screwdriver to easily take out that security torques. So don't let security torque screws 
prevent you from opening something up because it's really not that difficult to do with a flathead screwdriver if you get one the right size. Also when you're doing that you can also break the little security bit in the middle off when you're using the flathead screwdriver. If you do that that's even better because then you can just get a normal torque screwdriver to take to take the rest of the screws out just like that. Okay so now we come to taking out the um, power supply unit so you've got two Phillips screws right here so those are easy to remove just get a Phillips screwdriver in there and then you should be able to lift these little metal parts out that have the screw attached pretty easy and you've got this one over here same thing just unscrew the little Phillips just pull that out then you've got more security torque screws as well so there's one right here it's got little arrows pointing to them so I think I've already broken the security bit off this one so I can take it out with a normal torque screw driver so that's that then you've got another one around the side here again I've, I've broken the security bits off most of these simply by using that little flat head trick to take the screw out and then it also breaks the the security bit in the middle and lets me use a normal torque screwdriver so that's that one flip it around the other way around another one right here so we'll take that out And that should allow us to remove the power supply unit. First of all though, there's a little cable here that you should unplug, attaching the um, power supply unit to the board. And then, I'll turn it over here and try and pull this out. Okay, so Try and basically lift this up. Try and pull directly up if possible when it comes to this. There's some kind of like something trying to block it, but there we go. Got it out. So just use a bit of force to get that out. That's the power supply unit right there. Um, it plugs in on the back here. You can see the slot. Okay, so the next thing you're going to have to do is go ahead and unplug this ribbon cable right here. Unplug it on both sides, take the whole cable off. Then you've also got, if you look down here, we've got this little black wire that runs down uh, to the motherboard. So make sure you unplug that as well. So that's that little cable off. And also another thing you're going to want to take off is this one here, it kind of comes down, runs along the side of the disk drive, it attaches, I believe it attaches the disk drive to the motherboard. So we're going to take, so that's the DVD drive power cable out. So once you've done that you should be able to basically take the DVD drive off now once we've undone the screws. So I'll flip this back over. On the front, we've got another screw that needs to be taken out right here. So that is also, once again, security torques. Take that off. And then this whole little metal part should come completely out now because we've taken the other side off. So that's that side and we've got that side. Okay so once again one there, once again there's another Phillips screw right here to take out. Quite a small one. So we'll take that one out here. And once you've done that the disk drive should come free. Should be able to take that off. There's the the Blu-ray drive right there. So as you've got the uh, Blu-ray drive off, 
Blu-ray drive and the power supply are now free. So the next thing you're going to want to do is the part where we have to take the motherboard out if you're going to open this up any further. So there is another screw, try and get a good angle on here, but there is another Phillips screw right there that needs to come out because that is going to prevent the motherboard from budging if you don't take that one out on this side first. So I'll take that screw out first of all. Okay, so that's about as open as you can get it from this side. To take the motherboard out, we have to take it out from the other side, so you, you'll be looking at the motherboard from the back of the motherboard. So to take the motherboard out and see the front, you have to take the whole thing uh, out of the case, which is why you're going to need thermal compound, because you're going to be taking the motherboard completely out of the case, and that separates it from the heatsink. So let's go ahead, turn it around the other side here so what we've got here are two screws that are holding this plastic part in place again they are security torques once again so we'll take those out uh, there's one I have not removed the security part from so I'll use the little flathead again this little flathead method and gets the screw out quite easily. Okay, so to take this plastic part off here, best way that I find is if you get your fingers under this part right here and just pull up and then just kind of work your way down to this side and then you'll be able to take that off without too much difficulty. Okay, so we're almost we're almost there. There's another little cable right here that needs to come out. And this one's kind of weird. You don't kind of um, pull it directly. You kind of sort of push it up like that. It kind of pops out directly up. It looks like you would pull it out, but you don't. You push it upwards to take that cable out. It just connects the fan to the motherboard. Okay, so now we've got the bulk of the screws. I'll just skip past doing this, but I'll just show you where they all are first. So there's one over here. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's twelve screws to take out right here. Okay, so that's all of those screws out. Now you have to take these two screws here. Now these are holding the sort of the heat sink on. So once you take these out, you should really apply more thermal paste. Once you've done this, once you take the board out, this will loosen the board from the heat sink. take that off and now we should be able to take the motherboard out now we've got all those screws out this metal cage should just lift off revealing the back side of the motherboard and then to remove the actual motherboard itself we'll just lift up from the back here and then once you've got it sort of out like this just pull, pull it out from this side, and that's it, motherboard out. And you can see, you can see the thermal compound there. That's right, that's the heat sink, so again, that's why the only way to get the motherboard out, from what I can see, is to open it up like this, and therefore, when you do that, as you can plainly see here, there's the CPU you've got all the thermal goop all over there so you have to reapply that when you put it back together which is why I said have thermal compound at the start of the video so there you go guys there's a look at the front of the motherboard so we got our there's the front right there with the two USB ports here's where the hard drive connects we've got all our connectors for the disk drive uh, the power supply 
connector and then of course you've got your ports at the back, the CPU, all your memory chips, there's also memory chips at the back here as well around the CPU. Um, so yeah that's pretty much it. By the looks of things that's probably the Wi-Fi chip right there. Either that or it's this one at the back right here. Uh, but it's more likely I think this one right there, that horrible Wi-Fi chip. I do not like the Wi-Fi in the PS4, I think it's pretty crap built-in built -in card. But yeah, that's it. So that is how you fully open up the PS4 down to the motherboard. If you like this video or you found the information useful, go ahead and leave it a like, I really do appreciate that. And um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video.